We all heard the Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal valued at $75 billion. With that deal, Microsoft became the third largest company by pure play gaming generated revenue behind Tencent and Sony. Before the deal, by the end of third quarter of 2021, the top 10 gaming companies by revenue were Tencent, Sony, Apple, Microsoft, Google, NetEase, Activision Blizzard, Electronic Arts, Nintendo, and the C Group, ranging from 8.3 billion to 1.1 billion. So why all of a sudden big tech see gaming as a major growth sector? What fundamentals have changed? What is the future of this sector? And of course, how can our retail investors take a small bite into this sector? Welcome to Capital Trends. My name is Joshi and I will be joined by my good friend Chetan. That music made me nostalgic. If I remember it correctly, my first game was Road Rash. It's a 1991 racing game developed by EA Sports. It was on a video game console sold by Sega back in the day. And my first multiplayer game that we played on LAN was Counter Strike. I still remember the good old days of Pac-Man as well. What's the first game you ever played, Zoshi? You will be surprised. The first game which I played was Dave, it was like 2D game, in a black and white graphics. I think they developed the color graphics later on, but I think it was developed in 1988 and I played with it when I was in my year 5 or something, which must be like in 1995 or 96 years. Gaming industry is considered as part of entertainment industry. When we talk about video games, it's a pretty broad landscape. It's games on phones, tablets, computers, and consoles. This year, global gaming industry is projected to generate over $160 billion in revenue. Unity, the makers of the most popular game engine, in its recent gaming report, pegged gaming industry to reach $300 billion plus by 2026. This will help us put some perspective on how big the gaming industry is. So, music industry is worth in the $20 billion mark and box office is around $42 billion mark. And currently, the gaming industry is $160 billion behemoth. No wonder the big companies have set their eyes on this industry. So, where does, where does these big giants see value in gaming? Traditionally, the gaming sector was very segregated in terms of revenue. Selling expensive consoles, floppies, CDs, DVDs, Blu-ray, was the way most revenue was realized. Each company selling their gated games to their enthusiastic followers. But with the advent of streaming services like YouTube, Netflix and high-speed broadband, these companies want to create Netflix of gaming. What sort of gaming equipment and technology is out there currently? We can broadly categorize uh, this industry into console, PC, mobile, VR and cloud gaming. PC gaming is one of the largest segments in gaming. The ready availability of superior hardware makes PC gaming amazingly popular. However, the consoles have steadily gained their foothold with increased specs. For console gaming, back in the days we had Nintendo and Sega as dominant players. Today we have Microsoft Xbox and Sony PlayStation ruling the world. The console gaming market is valued at $34 billion plus and projected to grow. The next is mobile gaming. It sometimes gets easily discarded as casual gaming, but it makes nearly half of the total market share of the gaming industry. It is the largest segment of gaming by revenue. Easy access to smartphones and tablets has made it a big time winner. A lot of game studios go with mobile first approach as they know the market is very big for this. Apple made substantial revenue from iOS games. It's estimated that annual iOS gaming app revenue was 52 billion and Google Play was 37 billion in 2021. The recent Apple vs Epic Games code battle revealed that 70% of App Store revenue comes from games. 
The next is virtual reality and augmented reality, which is picking up quite a bit as well. Back in the day, we had PC gaming centers to play games on LAN. Now we have VR gaming studios. Pokemon Go was one of the most popular AR games. Lastly, eSports is also picking up quite a bit. It is quite similar to normal sports in a lot of aspects. Video games are played in arena where fans root for their teams and of course live streaming to millions of fans around the globe as well. Twitch and YouTube gaming is providing the ability for fans to connect to these players. Do you know if it is easy uh, as our tradition, traditional Netflix like you just log in and start playing or there's more to it? Well, pretty much. But gaming requires really low latency and highly sensitive gaming interfaces where a microsecond of lag can determine you win or lose or your character is alive or dead. So this task is easier said than done, but we all are getting there. This service is called cloud gaming. Where do we stand in terms of uptake of cloud gaming? Cloud gaming is an emerging technology that allows people to stream games using nearly any internet connected device with a screen, much as they stream videos on Netflix, Hulu and other platforms. Streaming games is more challenging though because games are interactive and require a lot more data to run smoothly. While Netflix moved into mobile games last year, it has so far offered only a handful of games that subscribers must download to an Android or iOS device, not games that can be streamed via the cloud. Consumer spending on cloud game service reached about $3.7 billion last year, with Microsoft Game Pass accounting for 60% according to research from Omdia, which forecasts total cloud game revenue will hit 12 billion by 2026. The global video game industry has been riding a wave of consolidation and investing in recent years. Spending on mergers and acquisitions nearly tripled to 26.2 billion in 2021 from 8.9 billion in 2020, according to the data from PitchBook. And venture capital deals nearly doubled to a record of 11.2 billion from 6.4 billion, according to the private market data firm. The storage space on consoles gets filled up pretty quickly as the games nowadays are very big. Even downloading games depending on broadband connection can take up quite a bit of time. Not to forget that the never ending supply chain constraints due to pandemic has put significant limits on availability of these hardwares to individuals. Besides graphic cards and data storage devices, there are a lot of accessories that make up this gaming hardware sector. It's estimated that the hardware and accessories alone were responsible for $82 billion last year. Since COVID pandemic, the hardware industry did grow financially, but it was plagued with so many supply chain problems that majority customers found it difficult to buy hardware and the resellers ended up making significant profit by marking up the prices. So there are all sorts of reasons that cloud gaming is emerging. The Activision CEO before merger with Microsoft mentioned that having purpose-built cloud was one of the motivators to partner with Microsoft. Can you name a few popular cloud gaming platforms by these giants? Microsoft has developed Xbox Game Pass, whose subscribers have increased since last year by 39% to 25 million. Google have Stadia, which has modest 1 million subscribers, Amazon Luna, which will be combined with Amazon Twitch and available for subscription, PlayStation Now, GE Force Now, Shadow Tech, G Cluster, and many, many more. Blockchain gaming platforms are also taking shape. C2X recently got $25 million funding to drive Web3 games. Blockchain and Bitcoin goes hand in hand in a similar way as gaming and metaverse. Could you please elaborate what role metaverse plays in gaming? During a roughly 15-minute investor and media call shortly after the announcement of the deal, executives from Microsoft and Activision mentioned the term metaverse more than 10 times. Video games are an example of how such a world might look and function, with many players enveloped for hours in virtual world where they spend money on digital goods and get their avatars together to interact. We very well know that COVID-19 pandemic immensely accelerated the time spent into gaming. People sitting at home, locked up, isolated, it was bound to happen. 
the valuation of more, most gaming companies skyrocketed. In a popular gaming company Roblox platform, users can teleport between millions of games, dedicated social spaces and concert avenues, and they can purchase virtual goods and enhance their experience. Epic Games Fortnite and Linden Research Second Life also encompass extensive virtual worlds. Activision's World of Warcraft, they appear as avatars in a fantasy virtual landscape and buy virtual goods such as pets. The company's games overall have nearly 400 million monthly players. According to estimates from Newzu, consumer spending on game software jumped by about 23% in 2020 from 2019, which was close to $180 billion, figure more or less unchanged in 2021. In addition to this data from PitchBook show that mergers and acquisition deals within the game industry nearly tripled to $26.2 billion in 2021 from $8.9 billion in 2020. Do you know any other blockbuster merger that is shaping up in the gaming world? As I mentioned, gaming industry is in expansion as well as consolidation phase. Expansion of products and exponential revenue, yet mergers of players and vertical integration of technology. Take-Two Interactive software maker of NBA 2K and the famed Grand Theft Auto buying Zynga for $11 billion. The offer went public on Jan 11th this year. The deal is expected to be completed in 2023. The combined company will have more than 1 billion users, creating an opportunity to cross-promote content to a broader audience. In recent years, Take-Two has expanded into mobile games through acquisitions of studios, Playdots, Social Point, and Nordius. Though Zynga started out making browser-based games for Facebook, it later shifted its focus to mobile games. Today, its portfolio consists of hits such as CSR Racing and Zynga Poker. Microsoft bought the owner of the popular Doom video game franchise for $7.5 billion. Also last year, Electronic Arts acquired Glue Mobile for $2.4 billion and Playdemic for $1.4 billion. That comes to the question that how much is addressable gaming market? According to May 2020 survey from NPD Group, when pandemic was at its peak, an estimated 244 million people in US play video games, which is up 15% from 2018 study. Americans spend an average of 14 hours a week playing video games, the report said compared to 12 hours in 2018. The pandemic spike at the start of COVID saw games revenue grow quite significantly and interestingly, it has still sustained the growth until quite recently. Substantial development and investment can be needed for creating a blockbuster game. Here in Australia, federal government this month announced $6 million funding to support Australia's video game industry and encourage to create original games. Who are the main players in cloud gaming and what are their offerings? There are many small and large players quite at the forefront of cloud gaming. The usual ones, Sony, Microsoft, Amazon, Google, Facebook, Chipmaker, Nvidia. The services cost between $5 and $15 a month and the selection of games they offer vary, with some featuring mainly older games rather than new releases. Sony's cloud gaming service, PlayStation Now, had 2.2 million paid subscribers as of April. NVIDIA's GE Force now had 4 million registered users as of August last year, including free and paid subscribers. And do you know who rules the gaming industry outside the world of cloud gaming? They are still uh, usual candidates like Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, Apple and Facebook. Microsoft has made numerous acquisitions to bolster its gaming segment. Of course, the recent acquisition for Activision um, is one of it. It's expected that Microsoft's global gaming market share will grow up by 10%. Microsoft introduced Kinect motion control sensor to capitalize on broader audience as well. Its latest consoles, Xbox Series X and Series S, are quite popular. Sony is another big name. It's estimated that Sony gaming revenue is at $22 billion dollar. Sony has a popular console line called PlayStations, with PlayStation 5 at the top of the line. Then comes Nintendo with estimated gaming revenue at $15 billion. 
there are quite a few other names uh, that you would hear in the gaming world. As you mentioned, Roblox Corporation is another American video game developer with a market cap of $29 billion. We have EA Sports, the makers of FIFA series and Battlefield series with a market cap of $35 billion. And thanks to the short sale debacle, most people by now have heard about GameStop. A short squeeze resulted in a 1500% increase of its share price. It is an American video game, consumer electronics and gaming merchandise retailer with an annual revenue of $5 billion. There is always a debate about how we are going to address this gaming market. Whether it, it will be dominated by consoles or whether it will be the cloud gaming that will be at a forefront. As we can see, the need for console is slowly getting eliminated. There are three major players in console business, Microsoft with its Xbox One, Sony with PlayStation 4 and Nintendo with hybrid portable console Switch, each costing around $400 to $500. Unless you want to want those hepatic feedbacks or VR experiences, most of the gaming money and experience is directed towards cloud gaming. Wherever you have your phone or smart TV or iPad, just download the app and start playing. Pay for subscription, no need to have extensive storage space or over-the-board consoles. Consumer is definitely spoiled for choice with this cloud gaming. But as we all can see, these tech companies are rivals of each other. Is there any friction between them towards successful delivery of these games? Oh yes, we all know the Fortnite maker Epic Games and Apple's battle as you mentioned before where Apple, the gateway controller of app stores, takes significant amount of cuts towards revenue generated from app downloads, whereas Epic considers it as an undue advantage, stifling competition. Apple have similar battle with Facebook and Google as well as, as well in gaming sector. From Apple's side, they want the control of their walled garden, which they have made significantly secure from cyber invasion and data sharing perspective. Google Stadia works on computer web browsers along with Google's own hardware, Chromecast Ultra for TVs and Pixel phones and tablets for mobile pay, play. iPhone and iPads are incompatible. Now let us move on to our concluding part of how can you access this market from investor's perspective. Buying individual stocks is something investor can consider. But remember, these tech companies generating revenue from gaming does not necessarily have gaming division as their largest revenue or profit generator. Microsoft, Tencent, Facebook, Google, Apple, Nvidia each have extremely diversified revenue bases. But companies like Electronic Arts and Take-Two Interactive, Nintendo, Playtica Holdings can be classified as pure play gaming. ETF ESPO by Van Eck offered on ASX is the best ETF under this sector. Major holdings are like Advanced Micro Devices, Tencent Holdings, Nintendo, Nvidia, Electronic Arts and NetEase. This meteoric rise of gaming industry is just getting started. From the good old days of Pac-Man to today's latest virtual reality games, this industry has seen significant technological advances with the influx of new gaming studios and established tech companies into gaming industry, it will be interesting to see where this is headed. But one thing is for sure, with the kind of boom the gaming industry has seen and the way big tech firms are expanding their portfolio in this industry, the gaming industry will be the new battleground. On that note, it's time to close off today's show. Thanks for listening to Capital Trends. Please follow us on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or whatever streaming service you use. Thank you. This recording is for informational purposes only and does not constitute an investment advice. Opinions expressed are as of the date recorded. Opinions are subject to change. Capital Trends Media shall not be responsible for trading decisions, damages or a loss resulted from or related to information, data analysis or opinions expressed on this podcast. Past performance does not guarantee the future results. All investments are subject to market risk including potential loss of principal. Please read product disclosure statement before investing into any product. We are not professional financial advisors. Do not take investment or financial advice from our podcast. Always consult a professional financial planner regarding advice that suits your individual needs which you can find on ASIC, April website in Australia. 